Okay. Hello to all of our viewers. Thanks so much for tuning in to our Lunch and Learn Hangout. Um, my name is Liz Eggleston, and I work with Course Report, which is a resource for finding the coding school that is right for you. Um, so if you haven't looked at Course Report yet, uh, you can use our directory to find coding schools that fit your needs, and you can use our blog to find great interviews with students and teachers um, and founders at all these boot camps across the world uh, to really equip you with all the information that you you need to make a good decision. So we've also started this great webinar series where we give you the opportunity to get some information straight from the source and to ask any questions that you have. Um, and today we are joined by Martin Ramson, the founder of Career Foundry, and Emil Lamprecht, who is the CMO at Career Foundry and is also a mentor in the UX course. So I want to remind everyone that we'll be doing a couple of Q&A sessions throughout the webinar. So please use the Q&A app that's in Google Hangouts to send in any questions that you have. Don't be shy. Um, and we'll try to get to all of them. And you can also tweet any questions that you have to course report. Um, and with that, I will pass it on to Martin. Great. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? I hope so. OK, good. Thank you, Liz. Um, yeah, um, I am going to tell you a little bit about um, how I became a web developer um, and how I came to start a company um, that is Career Foundry today. Um, so a um, bit about my background first. Um, I, um, I've been working as a product manager for about 10 years and um, haven't been coding, uh, but about one and a half years ago, um, I decided to take up um, to learn web development. And uh, why did I do that? Um, well, I had so many ideas for, for companies throughout the years. And uh, as a product manager, as a product guy, um, you know, you really want to make products and have loads of ideas, but no ways of actually turning them into real products. It's pretty frustrating. So I decided to learn web development. Um, and this was back in March of last year. Um, and two things happened that were kind of pretty surprising to me, at least. Um, one was that I've, I found it really, really fun to program. Um, um, and um, I'm doing it since. Um, and I'm learning something new every day um, and still really liking to you know, program websites. Um, and the other one, th the other thing that was surprising uh, was that I actually I did find somebody, um, and I, I did found a company um, with my, you know, due to my basically to my web skills. So um, I ran into my co-founder Rafaela about a year ago, and um, she wanted to start something in education. And me having gone through the basically the the trouble of of learning web development online. We came to talk about this, and we started the company based on my learnings, basically, of, of having to, um, of learning something, a new skill, um, online, all by myself, um, in like free tutorials, Code Academy, etc. Um, and um, so we got to talk about that, and we, we, we thought we start a company based on mentoring. So instead of doing everything on your own, why don't we connect? you know, you um, with a mentor, somebody that basically is working as a web developer already. Um, and, um, and by doing that, basically, you accelerate your learning process. So instead of, six, uh, you know, six months, it'll take you probably three months with a mentor. Um, so that was kind of the, base of the basic idea of Career Foundry. And since then, um, you know, we, I developed a website, careerfoundry.com, and I'm still working on it every day. Um, we have added now use, uh, you know, another course, which is user experience design. Um, and uh, yeah, and so I'm still working now as a web developer in my own company that I founded due to actually starting web development. So that's, um, that's sort of the story of, um, you know, how this company came to be. and. Um, and then maybe I'll tell you guys a little bit more details about what we do. Um, so it's a mentored service, as I said. Everything's happening online. 
um, we have a three months program with a mentor and and so through these three months you will basically have contact with your mentor every day um, you will build in the web um, in the web course you will build a full um, kind of end-to-end -end website um, dy dynamic web app with um, HTML CSS um, JavaScript and bootstrap um, with Ruby on Rails and so at the end of these three months with your mentor you would have built up a full website that is kind of you know on a similar level to careerfoundry.com which is also built on the same technologies so yeah that's what we do and um, uh, and um, yeah I hope that you have some some good questions for me and I pass it over to Liz yeah I've got some questions so okay so it's an amazing feat to <clears throat> sort of like change careers and teach yourself to be a developer what what were the types of like online resources that you used in your journey to become a web developer? And what yeah, was sort of I, like difficult about those, I guess, or really great? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used, um, so when I learned I used free tutorials, um, I started with Code Academy, mm -hmm. um, and I thought I was pretty good for, for learning the syntax of programming, you know, how does the syntax look like? Um, and then I, continued using a Ruby on Rails tutorial online uh, which is written by a guy called Michael Hartel I mm -hmm. think if I pronounce it correctly yeah. um, but I mean the difficulty with using uh, the free tools which are great by the way I mean using those are great but difficulty when you start um, a new career like myself is that you know you need a little bit more than just you know learning to learning the, the syntax of coding because you know being a web developer is so much more than just the syntax knowing the syntax it is you know how do you for example how do you look for solutions to problems that you need to solve um, you know how do, what tools do you use uh, you know how do you work on a daily basis all those questions were like uh, in my head and I didn't have any answers for those when I started out do you think that somebody who's going to start Career Foundry should do some of those online tutorials before, or do you think they can go straight into Career Foundry as like without any intro courses? I think it's a good idea to use uh, free tutorials uh, because it's a good way to test if you know if you like to program. Um, mm -hmm. I think that anybody can become a web developer. I mean, I'm a living proof of this, yeah. um, but not everybody likes to be a web developer and so you know you to be to be working as a web develop, developer you really need to like you know programming and the only way to find out if you like programming is to try it and so you know I think um, a good way is to use free to free tutorials online we also have a, um, a kind of a, a sneak peek into our course material so the first day of the three months course is is free of charge mm -hmm. so you can also go in there and check it out. Cool. Uh, th yeah, that's awesome. I've looked at that before. Um, okay, Mike Lynch has a question. What clues or hints should I look for to see if I'm passionate about coding, and how do I know that I can like really make a career out of programming? Um, yeah, I think the the proof of you being passionate about something is what you create with it. So, you know, if you're if you really want to create something, um, say a website, for example, and you're eager to make that better, and you're, you know, you can see the progress every day of that actually getting better, um, and um, you really like to, you know, when you get stuck, because you do get stuck as a web developer sometimes, you are, you know, you don't see that as a major bummer. You kind of, you kind of try to, to, to solve it, and when you do solve it, you're super happy, and you continue. I think that would probably, like, if you would work like that, then you probably will like web development. Cool. Um, and then y'all, for the web development course, you're teaching full stack uh, with Ruby on Rails, right? Right. Okay, cool. Um, so do you expect that at the end of the three-month course that a graduate of Career Foundry will be able to get a job as a junior developer or as a UX designer, or do you think that they'll have to do more before 
before sort of like doing that application process? Yeah, I think I think today companies often require experience. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you start out as a new career, obviously you have a problem because you don't have any experience. Right. A good way to, to acquire that experience is to do small jobs. Um, and so, um, you know, doing jobs for friends and family or, you know, taking freelance jobs. So you can go to, to sites like Odesk or Elance and getting small jobs and getting experience that way. Um, what's also very important is to have a portfolio. Um, you know, to have some proof of your knowledge. And throughout mm -hmm. our course, you build up a website, which is, you know, going to be basically your proof of, of, uh, of your skill. Um, so that you can use then later to get, you know, freelance jobs. Um, and then from that, start looking for jobs in startups or other companies. That's cool. There's so much good information on y'all's blog about becoming a freelancer and like the freelancer lifestyle. Yeah. I want to talk about that in just a second. Um, so Seth has a question, um, is it possible to learn in two months instead of three months if I already have some understanding in HTML and CSS? Yeah, okay. yeah, it is definitely possible. You can jump right into to the, to the Rails part if you want to go directly there. Cool, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so is the point of Career Foundry that people don't have to quit their jobs in order to start it? Or how many, how many hours a week are, are we looking at? Like, could you have a full-time job while you do you Career can. Foundry? Yeah, okay. it's possible. I mean, some of our students do have full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, we, so we say it's about 10 hours per week of study time. Um, and so, you know, if you divide that into, say, two hours per day um, during the week, or if you want to do more on the weekend, that's also fine. Um, but yeah, so it's possible to do it, you know, part time. I don't know if um, Liz disappeared. Oh, did we lose her? No. Can you still hear me? All right, I just go go. Continue talking about our core system. <laughs> can you can you hear me though? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. You can hear me. Okay, that means theoretically other people should be able to hear me, right? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> With the moderator gone, I don't know who can hear who. But um, okay. uh, so one thing one thing that you mentioned though about um, like sh the question that just happened was that you could jump straight from. Uh, like straight into the Ruby on Rails course, right? So basically skip the first month of our program. But I, it, let's just make that a little bit more practical. Like what kind of a level of programming do you need to have reached? HTML, CSS, maybe some JavaScript. What do you actually need to have achieved to be able to comfortably walk into that? Well, in the, so in the second part of our, um, so in the second and the third month of our program, we teach Ruby on Rails, so that's the back-end part of web programming, and and uh, so you know we're not necessarily teaching HTML and CSS as such. So you know if you feel that you are very comfortable with those technologies, and you know then then you don't need to learn those those parts, then that's fine. Um, but you know um, it could also be good to refresh some some of those parts as well. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're really kind of diving deep into Ruby on Rails on the second and the third month. Right, okay. okay. Sorry, y'all. you back with us? I'm back, yes. Okay. I'm so sorry. Thank you. No problem. No problem, no problem. We were just continuing to riff on the, on the subject of jumping in to the course midway. Okay, cool. Um, so do you, um, are any of your students sponsored by their companies that you know of? Who will come yeah. into Career Foundry? Yeah. Yeah, it is pretty common actually um, to get sponsored, and it, I think it's a it's a great way to, you know, to add more skills to to mm -hmm. to your skill set. You know, it's it's really good to know some web programming. You know, if you're for example a designer, you know, it's almost required that you know you know some basic HTML and CSS skills today, and also in other jobs. Like there's a lot of people who are working in. An, in, in testing, for example, that are taking our courses, 
basically to understand, you know, how, what is it that, you know, other people around me are working with. So that's also happening. Cool. Okay, Seth has another question. What web application will we be building in the course? So do you um, have, like, an example, or can you, like, describe the, the type of application that, that people are actually building? Yeah, we're, we're building, so we have a default, which is a to-do app. Um, so you build a to-do app. If you don't have already an idea for a project, mm -hmm. um, but we recommend our students to, you know, do their own ideas, um, and um, because we think that, you know, when you have your own idea, when you come, you know, what I talked about before, when you come, with, when, when you really want to build something, that's actually when you do your best work and when you actually learn the most. So we encourage our students to come up with an idea. It doesn't have to be, you know, something that turns into a product later on, um, but, you know, uh, you know, anything that is that, you know, you think is fun to build, then, you know, we recommend doing that. And obviously, with your mentor, you will discuss this to see mm -hmm. is that a viable project to work on, you know, as a starting point or or not. Cool. So speaking of mentors, Emil, if you want to talk about, so we've got a couple of questions about the UX and UI design course, and then some questions about mentorship. Um, so if you want to talk a little bit about uh, how you sort of mentor people and a little bit about the UX uh, design course, then we can we can do those questions afterwards. Sure, sure. So mentor uh, from a mentorship perspective, Martin's also a mentor uh, for the web dev course. Or actually, that's how they started the company. Of course, um, not mentoring so much now as we have other things for him to be doing. Um, but I am sort of a, one of the backup mentors for the UX course. I helped develop it uh, with a couple people here in Berlin who run a fairly well-known uh, and award-winning UX design agency called Whole Design Studios. Um, so when we decided to do this course, we really wanted to build something that was focused on effective UX. So one of the problems with UX design, as people who are interested in the topic and have researched it might have found out, is that it's not very well defined. Um, UX design often includes mention of also graphic design or also front-end design or is sort of an undefined product role. Uh, and what we really wanted to do with this course was kind of pool the knowledge of myself and the other course writers in a way that we could say, okay, this is what UX universally represents. This is its definition. And this is the process through which you go through starting with a business goal, starting with an idea to create an effective design, an effective UX for a product. Um, so that's how the whole course is built. And the mentoring relationship to that is a little bit different from the web, not hugely, but a little bit different from the web course in so much that we're really, we're not so much problem solvers, we're actually just there to sort of help the UX students push it one level farther, um, which is having never done this stuff before, often, you know, you'll try things, but you won't necessarily put in full effort if you don't know exactly what it's supposed to be. Um, and we're there to say, okay, this is right, this is wrong, this is great, this is bad, do it this way, or continue this line of thought. Um, you know, there's a balance in UX between kind of the technical understanding of it and the creative side of it, because the creative side of it is very much dictated by numbers, it's dictated by data. So what things go where and why is more and more dictated by data. So it there's a part of it that doesn't feel very creative, but yet you're in a position where you constantly have to be solving problems based on that data. Uh, and we really just try to encourage that and guide that along as much as we can. Um, the course does have a UI element, so a, a graphic design element for people who are not familiar with the acronyms. UX is user experience. UI is user interface, otherwise known as graphic design. Um, there is a UI element. It's very small. It's not a very important part of the course. It's really just to try and make sure that the portfolio piece you walk out of also looks nice enough that people that you present it to who don't understand UX properly will also think it looks attractive. That's really the, the main purpose of it. Because UX in itself is not, the, the role doesn't include making things attractive. It includes making things incredibly effective. Um, and effective for the business goals that are part of that plan, so often that has to do with conversion of some kind or interaction of some kind, 
Um, and then for the user to enjoy that experience, whatever it is. And it doesn't, it helps obviously if it's nicely designed, but nice design doesn't necessarily dictate a, a person's ease in accomplishing a task. So it's important for people to understand that. We harp on that a lot. We get a lot of questions from people looking at the UX course. Um, you know, will you also teach us coding? Will you also teach us design? Will we learn to use Adobe Suite? Um, we will teach, there is some semantic HTML instruction in the course, very little, just so you, kind of like Martin's experience with um, Code Academy, so you understand syntax, so you know what you're looking at, you know how to divvy up content so developers understand what you're presenting them when they have to build what you've designed. Um, but it doesn't go very deep. And same with the UI work, it doesn't go very deep. We, we teach you how to work with designers. We teach you how to implement design over your wireframes as much as possible. Um, but there's no way that we could teach people um, how to be effective graphic designers. And we're not really interested in that. We're really interested in giving people a process. Um, Marcio has a question. Um, can you tell us how the UX and UI design course can improve the skills of a visual designer who's already employed in the field? These are our favorite types of students. <laughs> um, students, individuals, whatever you want to call them, these are the guys that have a huge, huge, huge advantage. Because, so Marcio, if you've been designing for a long time, um, not even a long time, if you have a graphic background that you can leverage, you already understand a lot of the kind of base theory of problem solving with design. Uh, which means that the theoretical aspects of the course are going to be very easy for you to understand. For some, sometimes for people who really have no design background, it's very difficult. Um, on the flip side, what you can really take away from this then is the process, is the order in which things need to happen to create design, test, reiterate design, reiterate design, reiterate design um, a product so that it is most effective and then package it and be able to hand it over to someone like a developer or a team of developers in a way that they can then design it effectively uh, or build it effectively, I should say. Um, and that's that's the biggest advantage of the UX course. Some of our um, some of the students who kind of even manage to accelerate through the course a little bit faster or really stay sort of on the daily beat are, you know, longtime print designers uh, who take this as a way of kind of building a new toolkit, being able to now work not just in ad uh, or, or traditional print, but move into more digital sectors with really a confirmed understanding of how you take a business goal and what the stages are of development to be able to create a final product. Cool. Yeah, I think that's really neat to see um, print and visual designers like moving into the tech space. It's, um, it seems like we very logical. Em. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need them. We need them, but we need them also to understand the difference between kind of design or graphic type mm -hmm. of designs and UX design. So again, there's a lot of blurry lines. People don't know where those lines are. UX is a very young field. It's only been around 10 years. Very undefined for a lot of people, especially people looking at it to, for the first time. So they need to understand the difference. Um, and it's great when uh, print designers can come into the course really open-minded and looking for that process so that they know how to effectively execute for clients and they, those are the people that take away the most from the course. Very cool. Um, okay, so Martin, I think you can probably answer some of these questions as well, but I wanted to talk about the like logistics of the mentorship aspect of Career Foundry because I think that's very unique um, to your program and it can be hard for people to wrap their minds around like how they'll be mentored. Um, so can you tell us some of the different ways that you like communicate with the people that you mentor um, and like what's been most effective if you like pair program with them or, or how, how that sort of actually plays out? Yeah, um, so the way we set up the programs is that, as I said before, you're building a, for example, in the web course, you're building a website, right? And um, every day of the course is structured around two hours of learning uh, material. And then out of those two hours, basically 30 minutes is just, you know, learning, understanding. And about one to one and a half hour is about, you know, building something on top of that understanding on your project. And at the end of each day, you have a, an assignment that is related to your project and these learnings. Um, so that assignment you will then submit to your mentor and get feedback on. 
And so you will have daily interaction with your mentor, where your mentor, you know, gives you advice, gives you motivation to, you know, to do, to continue to, you know, inspires you to do even more on your project. So there's a, like a daily interaction um, around your project and what you're building. And then, uh, obviously, whenever you have questions, uh, if you're stuck on something, you know, you can uh, also ask your mentors, and they are very quick to respond. Um, and that is all happening over, over chat or over email. Okay. Um, and then once a week, there is a Skype call with your mentor or Hangouts. And uh, then you can discuss things that go into more, you know, into more, you know, deeply. Um, things that you might not have understood, um, or if you have other questions around, I don't know, for example, the career as a web developer or mm -hmm. tools to use, etc. So you can go into more, you know, depth about uh, around those topics as well. Yeah. So that's that's I guess shortly kind of how it works on a on a day to day basis. Um, you had talked about earlier uh, about students working on like their own passion project in addition yeah. to some of the assigned projects. If somebody wants to learn something outside of the curriculum, like if they want to focus on JavaScript more or like even learn Python or something like that, would a mentor be able to help them do that? Well, I mean, it depends on what it is, right? So okay. if you're staying within, you know, the realms of, you know, web development and Ruby on Rails, for example, mm -hmm. you know, our mentors are all, you know, very good at those topics. So they can probably help you with anything that you're trying to build within those, you know, within that. Um, and that's really the advantage of having your own project because when you start building your own, you know, your own stuff, you will run into things that you want to do that are, you know, that might not be part of the course, right? Yeah. But your mentor will obviously be able to help you with those things as well because, you know, they are good web developers. So, you know, you will, you will find out even more if you have your own project, you know, going beyond even what's in the, in the course material. Cool. Um, to to that point, oh, Yes, please, Emil. To, to that point, um, I just have to insert this quickly. So me Martin is currently mentoring one student at the moment, and it's me. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've decided <laughs> to do an accelerated version of our web course just so I, you know, I'm interested in learning how to code, but also so I understand the course better from the position mm -hmm. of working within the company. Um, and I chose to work on my own project. Uh, and it's, it's the situation which you just described, which is, you know, I start, I've started building a site, and I get very excited about, oh, I want it to do this which isn't necessarily in the course, but I'm interested in what that is and how it works because it's what I want on my site. And then I go looking for the, for the solutions to that. Sometimes I find them. Sometimes I don't even come close. And, you know, the, the mentor aspect in which, you know, I'm lucky because I just have to shout across the room at him, but, um, you know, the, the mentor aspect of that is that when I do have my weekly Skype call with Martin, uh, he can kind of fill in the blanks for me, help me, answer those questions and actually develop the functionality on the site that I am looking to do, regardless of whether or not it's in the course. Um, and that's, that's a huge shout out to what the mentors are, are capable of for people who are really driven by their own ideas. Yeah. A lot of people that I talk to say that like one of the biggest things that they learn from their boot camp is like how to Google <laughs> and like Google effectively. And oftentimes like someone, only someone who's really like in the field can like explain to you how to find an answer. Um, so I can see how that would yeah. be helpful. Yeah, that's very, very true. I mean, that I think um, the main goal is really to come out of these three months being able to go on your own at the same mm -hmm. speed that you were going on with a mentor. I think that's really the main goal because then you can continue learning. And, and one of the things that you really need to learn is actually to Google. This really sounds, uh, sounds weird, but... But um, in the beginning, you don't really know how to, what to look for and how to look for it. And that's really, really, really important. I mean, as a web developer, I don't know all the millions of different uh, syntax that's out there. I, I just don't have it in my head. So I need to Google constantly for how things are done. Um, but you get very good at it after a while. Um, another thing is, like, how you steal code from other people, you know? Mm -hmm. It's it's very good actually to go in and, and take code from other people, break it apart, see how they've done it, and try to make that yours. You know, 
um, and and try to understand it. And these kind of techniques are very important to um, to, to learn, and that's what a mentor can do can help you with. Absolutely. I mean, especially in the first month, you don't even know what the question is. Right. Much less the answer. And the mentor can at least help you figure out what the question is, and then give you one. Uh, you know, give you an answer. And that's. It, that process takes a lot longer and is much more frustrating on your own. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a few people who have joined us in the last few minutes, so I just want to remind everyone to use the Q&A app on the side um, of your control panel, and you can ask any questions that you have for Emil and Martin. Um, so are, are you all actively looking for more mentors? Um, and what does someone have to do to become a mentor at Career Foundry? What are your qualifications. Well, maybe maybe Martin can speak to the web qualifications and I can speak to the UX ones. Okay. Yeah, I mean we're looking for for, you know, really good web developer obviously, you know, that are, you know, good at Ruby on Rails. Um, you need to be, you know, active um, on GitHub for example, you know, you need to have an impressive portfolio there. Um, we do then a series of Skype interviews. Uh, with you. We check your code and these kind of things as well. Important is that you really like, you know, teaching. Or mm -hmm. I shouldn't say teaching. It's not really teaching. Mentoring is slightly different. It's not, it's not about, you know, uh, talking in front of an audience. Um, it's really a more personal approach than that. But you really need to like, you know, helping others understand uh, technology and understand web programming. So, that's really important, and you need to be a social person as well. You know, we're looking for people that are, you know, that are doing things online, that are, you know, active on socially, you know, on, on Twitter and so on. You know, we, we want really people that are, that are like, you know, in the forefront of, of what they do. Cool, Emil. How about for the UX course? I mean, everything that Martin said is relevant as well, apart from okay. the web development part. You know. Um, we, I try to put some pretty hard classifications on experience for the UX course, so um, you know all the same things apply in terms of portfolio. Um, you have to have a digital presence. Um, you you have to prove that you know what you're doing, and you have to prove that you have a process that is understandable. Because even if it's not exactly the process we teach in the course, if you don't understand what the process is or should be for UX. You're, yeah. you're not actually a UX designer, and there's still a lot of confusion there, as I've mentioned several times. So we really try and get people who have um, five plus years of UX design experience. If they have less than that, then they have to have teaching experience before. Um, teaching or mentoring experience in another context, whether it's for accelerators or you know, whatever that context may be, so they understand how to do that relationship. Um, we love you if you're charismatic. You know, if you're going to be on Skype for hours at a time with lots of people that, you know, have paid for, you know, the instruction, have paid for the help, have, have asked us as, as a company to assist them learn a new skill, um, you know, we try to get people who are very into what they're doing. You know, the, the, the more excited you are about the topic, uh, the more apt you are to really help someone do it well and, and enjoy do it and that's really important for us that's super super important for us and then sort of the last one that I would apply to um, both sides of the equation is uh, we prefer freelancers whenever possible um, it's really hard for people who are in full time positions to effectively mentor because you know the, the rhythm of mentoring is a little bit sporadic um, and it's hard sometimes for full time uh, employees to be really effective mentors, especially if they have more than one student. So we, we're usually looking for freelancers. Um, and to answer kind of the original start of your question, how can they actually get to us? Well, there, there is a mentor page on Career Foundry. You can find it in the footer. Uh, at the bottom of that page, there's uh, an application button where you can send us a mission, and go, uh, a message um, with some of your info, and it goes straight in through our mentor line, and we receive it pretty quick, and we respond pretty quick. And we're always looking for mentors, always, all over the world. Doesn't matter where you are, who you are. If you have the qualities that Martin and I have described in the past few minutes, you know, we definitely want to meet you. We want to see what you got, and uh, see if we can get you involved. 
Very cool. Um, so Mike has a question. Once I learn Ruby on Rails for three months, how difficult will it be to pick up iOS or Android on my own? I think um, so. programming languages actually look pretty similar. Mm -hmm. And the process of programming is actually rather similar. Um, now, of course, there's a, there's a different language when you program in, in iOS or, or, or Android. So you need to learn. It's like lear learning a second language. Once you learn the, you know, Italian, you can learn Spanish too. You know, learning yeah. Italian is not is easy, but then it's going to get easier. So, um, but also, what's happening is actually that um, programming languages become more similar. Actually, like uh, for example, Apple just released a, a new language called Swift, um, and um, that actually looks very much like Ruby on Rails. Um, so, um, and they did that intentionally, obviously, because they know that there is millions of web developers out there that don't know how to, you know, program on iPhone and doing iPhone apps. So, of course, they did a language that's, you know, that appeals to web developers. So that is also happening, and we are actually looking into building in a, a Swift course as well in Career Foundry in the coming months. So. Um, cool. Yeah, so it's it's definitely doable once you learn. And I think most of these skills we talked about before that are you know about problem solving, about you know knowing how to Google for problems and the, uh, you mm -hmm. know solutions to problems. These are things you need. These are skills that you need as you know when you develop any any type of apps. So yeah, definitely. Um, so it sounds like y'all have the uh, sort of like technical or hard technical skills figured out. Um, how do how do students with Career Foundry um, learn soft skills like working in a group and communicating? Are they learning that like from their mentors, or do you suggest that they attend like hackathons or meetups, or how are they sort of like getting those those uh, those sort of soft skills? I guess we do a lot of talk about. Um, the process of building a personal mm -hmm. brand um, as, as an important step, especially for a beginner. Uh, it's one of the reasons we focus so hard on the topic of freelancing. Even if you're not interested in becoming a freelancer, everything, especially if you're listening to this and you've been listening to the free or reading the freelance stuff, you're like, I don't want to be a freelancer. Trust me, read it anyway. Because what we're trying to do is enforce the principles of those soft skills more than anything. How do you manage yourself? How do you go out and find people to work with? How do you work with other people? Um, you know, in, in our learning environment, there's some of that because you are engaging with a mentor and they're walking you through and they're, you know, part of your team, if you will. They're, it's their job to sort of interface against you as you grow. Um, but, you know, it's, it's never going to replicate working in an actual team environment in, in the same way that a job will. Uh, so one of the things that we do for certain locations right now, uh, it's not very widely spread. It's mostly Europe right now, so US people unfortunately don't really have access to it yet. Um, we do build local networks. We have a system of meetups that happen in cities across Europe that will be expanding and expanding quite a lot in the coming year. Um, and this is, for us, mostly an opportunity to take students and mentors uh, in to develop new students and mentors, of course, but also to kind of give active ones a meeting point, an opportunity to grow their own network and a way for us to help individuals improve in that way. Um, and we also, you know, we, we make the Career Foundry team itself available all the time to all students. So if people have concerns or are not sure how to do that stuff, we try to communicate to them as often as po possible. They can always come and talk to us, um, you know, particularly on the freelance topics or things related to that. I was a freelancer for seven years. I traveled the world doing consulting for marketing and products. So, like, you know, it's my pleasure to teach people how to be independent and go and do wild shit. So, excuse my language. So, it, you know, it's, it's really important. Uh, to us that students understand that it's hard for us to provide it in the course, but we do as much as we can around it to make it easy for them. Yeah, absolutely. For everyone who's watching, um, if you haven't read the great like freelancing blog posts on the Career Foundry blog, you should, totally should, and I'll include it in my follow-up email to everyone. Um, but it's great. It's got like awesome tactical tips, like very real life um, 
real life advice. So I've, I've enjoyed reading this. Um, okay, we have a question from Casey, and I'm sure you all get this a lot, uh, but what differentiates your offerings from your competitors like Thinkful and Block, et cetera? You or me? <laughs> you can go. Okay, I love this question. <laughs> um, Thinkful and Block are really great examples. They're both great services. We love them because they tout a very similar mission, which is to help people level up in these skills. Um, the most obvious difference, just to start with, of course, is that you know, Thinkful is a purely web development program. Block is almost entirely a web development pr program. They had a web design vertical that they've now changed into a UX design vertical. It's very young. Um, but it also good from what we can tell. Um, the main difference, you know, aside from the fact that we do multiple verticals, is really the fact that we're driven by the mission of developing your career. Uh, it's not about just learning the skill, uh, which is, you know, if, if there are more attractive way for you to learn the skill, then great, you know, they're a similar construct of service. Uh, but we bespoke wrote all of our courses. They licensed them and then added mentors and have a great service, but we bespoke wrote all of our courses specifically to cater to the idea that you're learning this to move into a new career. Yep. And that is a very specific set of motivations and that's a very specific construct to how we built our courses and it's it's vitally important to the people that take the course with us. You know, it's if you're looking to be just a hobbyist, if you want to just web develop on the side, um, there's nothing stopping you from doing the other services, and we have no argument with that. They're good services. Um, but if you want to do something that's really progressive in terms of moving forward with a new career or adding a skill set that you can then apply to your current freelance career, mm -hmm. apropos the designer that asked the question earlier, Marcio or whatever his name was. Sorry, I forgot your name. Um, you you know, it. this is a this is a great opportunity. Uh, for those type of people to learn that within a construct that allows them to apply it very directly. Uh, and that's, you know, that's really the biggest difference. There's other differences, of course, you know, geologically we're more European catered, some of those other services are more US catered, but we have US students, we have, have US mentors, so in the end, you know, those sort of details don't really matter. Um, you know, we live and work out of Berlin because we have a passion for helping people become independent. Uh, because we're all independent in a certain way that is harder in, in even cities in the U.S. Uh, and that's how we constructed the courses. So that's the biggest cool. differentiator. Yeah, I think that's definitely a, a great differentiator. And I wanted to um, just highlight that y'all are based in Berlin, but people from the U.S. can take the courses. There are mentors that can, like, accommodate that. There's right like people people from around the world can take these. Yeah, yeah, Australia, Asia, Africa, US, you know, obviously the bulk of our student body is in Europe because we're based here and we we do the most development here. Um, it's you know close to home is where mm -hmm. it's good for us, but you know we have act, active students on East Coast and West Coast US. Uh, working with mentors that are both in the U.S. and in Europe. Uh, we have a couple students who are starting with mentors in Australia who are on the West Coast oh. as well. So, you know, it depends on the time zones. It depends on the availability of different people. If they work a full-time job, they're only available evenings, which means someone else who works a night job needs to be available in the mornings. And we try as much as we can to to match that up for people. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so we will um, we'll try to wrap up in the next few minutes. But um, So I've got some... Uh, questions for you just sort of like rapid fire. So when is the next course? Can you start anytime? Anytime. Anytime. Cool. Yep. And just what's the application process? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You can just sign up. It's of your own accord. I mean, you can talk to us beforehand as much as you'd like. We're happy to walk you through kind of the process, but you can enroll whenever you want. Um, there's no application process. It's open to anyone. Uh, and once you've enrolled, within 24 hours, we've connected you with a mentor, and they've gotten in touch with you, and you can start working on your course content right away. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so when you when you basically when you signed up, which is free on the Career Founder website, you will have access to you know the the first day of the courses, as I said before, and um, the whole you know syllabus of the course um, uh, overview, um, and then. You know what we usually happens is that we contact you, 
and then we have a we have we have a chat. You know, we have a Skype call uh, with one of us to go through the details of what the course entails and how mentoring works in in practice and daily life. So that's usually what happens, and I encourage you to use that opportunity. Um, so you know, because um, obviously doing a three months program is a big is a big um, big thing to do, right? Uh, in terms of time investment and and money. So you know, you know, take that and opportunity and talk to a mentor beforehand, and you know that's what we offer when you when you sign up. Absolutely. Do people need to have a certain computer to start, or like software downloaded? No. Um, so you only need a um, a computer connected to the internet. That's pretty much it. Um, okay. We use uh, we have you know the tools that we use throughout the course are. Um, are provided, so you know you don't need to have any kind kind of tools. You can have a Mac or a PC or a Linux machine. Anything works. Awesome, and it's four hundred dollars a month, right, for three months? Yes. Awesome. Correct. Great. Hint, hint to the wise: there may be an upcoming change to that price. So oh. if you're interested, get in touch now. Cool. Oh, I understand. I just picked it up. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> that's great. I mean, that's one of the lower, lower priced programs I think for the online mentor driven programs. Um, so, love to hear it. Yeah. Um, okay, fantastic. Well, is there anything else that y'all want to add that we didn't touch on, Neil or Martin? Um, actually, we've got one more. Okay, we've got one more question. So David says, would there be a lot of value in taking both courses, both the UX and the web development? Yeah. Oh yeah, huge. So we like to call, um, there, there's a name in tech that gets loosely sp thrown around for people who know how to do web development and effective UX and conversion design. They're called unicorns because they're very rare. They're very hard to find. We'd like to think that they are also silver-blooded in reality, but the, the fact of the matter is that if you can be good at both, you've you know, learning Ruby on Rails basically as a potential developer will triple your market value. Being able to prove that you can do effective UX will quintuple your market value. Um, and will also make it much easier for you to build and execute your own projects, especially as you're starting. Uh, it will also make it much easier for you to deal with sort of those first few pieces of experience as you start to build friends' projects or your first little freelance clients. Because you will have to understand less, you'll, it'll be easier to interpret a client's needs and just sort of put it down and execute. Um, we, ha we often also get asked what order to do it in if they want to do both. Um, Martin and I always argue about which <laughs> is better to do both. Um, Martin argues it's better to do web development first. I argue it's better to do UX first. Go figure. Um, my theory being that you want to learn how to design a product and then be able to execute on your design. Uh, Martin's argument Martin, being that you should your... learn. Yeah, Martin, you can give your own argument. Well, I think you know, I'm the type of guy. I just need to put it. I need to. I need to. You know, be able to build something. I can't. I can't just draw it on paper and then be happy with it. You know, I need to basically have it there. It needs to be a website. So you know, that I, I would start from that starting point. But you know, we're all, I guess, different. I mean, from the from the standpoint of learning UX, if you're really interested in being an effective UX designer, you know, learn the process first and then learn how to execute it. But it, it, in the end, it doesn't matter if you're going to do both, especially back to back. Um, do them in the way that feels good. You know, if you think you can take the kind of technical overload of coding and are really ready for that, just jump in and and do it and do it with passion. Awesome. Do you all have anything else you want to add about Career Foundry? Get in touch with up? us. Get okay. in touch with us. The, the main thing, the biggest mistake people can make is thinking about it or not being unsure about it or not understanding something and not talk to us. You know, we will tell you very plainly to your face in a Skype call if the pro... You know, we're not interested in taking your money and having you drop out halfway through or not being happy or realizing that this isn't a skill that you wanted to learn yet. We want you to understand what you're getting into. Uh, we want to under want you to understand the potential of the outcome. 
uh, and also in the different ways that we can possibly help you so that if you're in the program we can do that as much as possible. So if you're interested at all, you know, come talk to us as a first priority because we'll make the time for you, we'll talk it through, and then you know. Wonderful. Martin, do you agree? Anything else to add? I totally agree. And maybe just adding, like, how you contact us, obviously, you know, through our website, careerfoundry.com, is a good starting point. And um, you can reach out to us from there. We have a phone number. We have, a, you know, an email there that yeah, they can reach out to us from. And if you sign up on our site, we will reach out to you um, for the next step. Awesome. Okay, well, thanks everyone so much for joining Course Report and Career Foundry for this webinar. Um, Martin and Emil, we can't thank you enough for, for being here. Um, and if you have any additional questions for Career Foundry, I will be sending out their contact information, everything that they just said, in, um, in an email after this. Um, and also, if you're considering starting a course with Career Foundry, we have an exclusive scholarship for you, um, so just enter Course Report 14 in when you check out, and you'll get 15% off your tuition. Um, and if you have any questions about Course Report, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, we'll be sending out the recording of this webinar, so you can send it to all your friends who might have missed it. Um, and so check your inboxes for that, and visit CourseReport.com, sign up for our email list, and you'll get all of our future updates about webinars and interviews like this one. Um, so have a great rest of your day. Hope you enjoyed this lunch and learn, and we'll see you soon. Sure, guys.